Qualitative research lets companies find out what customers want, come up with ideas for how to improve the product or add to the product line, make the marketing mix clearer, and find out how the product fits into customers' lives. The study will help all kinds and sizes of businesses. For example, businesses can use qualitative research to find out how customers feel about the product or service, what they value, and what they think of it. With qualitative research, you can figure out why people act the way they do and use that knowledge to make marketing and sales plans. The study can also help you make sure that your products and services meet the needs of the people you want to reach. For example, if you own a restaurant and want to come up with a new menu, you can do qualitative research and ask people in the area what they think about the food, service, and prices. This strategy will make it more likely for you to succeed. How do you define qualitative research? Qualitative research tries to figure out why people act the way they do by using methods like in-depth interviews and group talks to observe and ask questions without a set plan. The method involves collecting and analyzing both main and secondary data that isn't about numbers. The goal of qualitative study is to find out the real reasons why people buy things and what their values and beliefs are. In qualitative research, you ask open-ended questions that start with what, how, and why to find out what people think about a new product or service before it comes out or is made. This way shows how customers feel about the brand, what buyers want, and what the pros and cons of the product or service are. It also helps you analyze your marketing materials and guess how your product or service will affect your customers' lives. In the early 1940s, American sociologist Paul Lazarsfeld used focus group interviews to study how propaganda affected people during World War II. In the late 1940s, American psychologist and marketing expert Ernest Dichter created a new type of consumer research called motivational research. Dichter used Freudian psychological ideas to figure out why people do the things they do. He talked to customers in detail to find out what they wanted and how they felt about certain products. In the 1960s, marketing professor John Howard started looking at customer behavior through the lenses of psychology, anthropology, and economics. At the same time, market analysts paid attention to how people feel and what they think about things. As a result, in-depth conversations, video-recorded focus groups, and computer-assisted telephone interviews became popular ways to do qualitative research. Since the internet and mobile devices came along, qualitative study has changed in many ways. Researchers can now do surveys on a much bigger scale because of the internet. Marketers can use hyper-segmentation and hyper-personalization to start targeted advertising campaigns, use software to analyze market research, and find out what customers think by analyzing social media. Let's look closely at the basic ways qualitative study is done. Qualitative means of research. Focus groups, individual interviews, observations, in-home videos, lifestyle immersion, ethnographic research, online sentence completion, and word association are some of the most popular ways to do qualitative research. We'll talk about each one in more depth below. Focus groups. Focus groups are meetings where people talk about a certain product and how to sell it. Most groups have between 6 and 10 people and a moderator who pushes people to talk about how they feel about the product. Focus groups are usually held in person so that people can say and show how they feel about a product or advertising effort. This method can be used to try marketing programs, figure out what a product's overall idea is, look at the words and pictures in ads, and figure out how new types of product packaging work. Focus groups that meet in person are becoming less popular these days. Instead, researchers are paying a lot of attention to online talks that use video conferencing tools. A look at social media. Social media and mobile gadgets give brands more ways to get information and figure out what it means. Customers can now talk with brands directly on the social media sites where they spend their free time. Content analysis of Facebook posts, comments, tweets, YouTube videos, and Instagram pictures lets brands find out what people are doing, where they are, and what words they use most often. You can ask users for feedback, ask them to fill out a short survey, or talk to customers to let them know about your marketing plans and how new goods are coming along.
Also, the people who take part in qualitative study can give more information about their lives, like photos and videos, which helps us understand their thoughts and feelings better. Interviews with each person. Most of the time, a one-on-one -on -one discussion is done in person, over the phone, or through video conferencing. The interviewer asks the customer a number of questions to find out why he bought the goods in the first place. One-on-one -on -one talks are like free-flowing conversations and include questions that don't have to be answered in a certain way. The talks can be flexible, partly planned, or not planned at all. You can ask the customer what they don't like about the product, why they bought it, and where they heard about it. Observations Observations give researchers a chance to see how customers react to the goods in the store and to study how they shop and what they buy. This way is better than written surveys because it gives a better idea of how people feel. For example, the researchers can watch where people stop in front of the store, what draws them to the shop window, and which way they walk inside. Observations also help find problems with the way products are placed on shop shelves, with too much stuff on the shelves, or with products that are out of stock. You can also get feedback from customers to improve some parts of the shopping process, such as how the package looks. In home movies, researchers can see how customers use a product in their own homes by watching movies taken there. With this method, you can watch how users act in a casual and unforced way, so you can get a better idea of how people are using your goods. Customers can keep video diaries or make videos with detailed comments about your goods. You can put all of the qualitative material in one place and make a hub to help you analyze and use the information you've collected in the future. Immersion in a lifestyle Lifestyle involvement is another way to get feedback from customers in a comfortable setting. Immersion means that the expert is very involved in the life of a customer. For example, the researcher might go to an event, like a party or family get-together, and watch how the person acts and reacts in a familiar setting. Watching how people talk to their family and friends is becoming an increasingly useful way to learn more about their wants, problems, and motivations. Research on ethnic groups Ethnography is a type of study that grew out of anthropology in the 20th century. It involves watching people in their natural environments, not in a lab. In particular, the researchers watch how the people they talk to do things like go food shopping or make dinner. This lets you see what people really do, not just what they say they do. Ethnography uses many different methods, such as photography, video recordings, notebook studies, and direct observation. Researchers can watch how a person acts at home, at work, or with family or friends. As a method of ethnographic research, passive observation means following and watching people without talking to them or getting in the way of what they are doing. Active observation, on the other hand, means working or cooperating with customers, asking them questions about a product or service, and joining their team or group. Online sentence finishers and word games. A projective method used in qualitative study, sentence completion lets customers say what they think and feel. With this method, the people who fill out the poll get it with sentences that aren't finished. They should fill in the blanks in sentences that describe the goods or find the right words for the sentence. With this method, the researcher can range qualitative data. Word association is a similar method that helps researchers learn about how well-known a product or brand is and what pictures and ideas people have about it. The respondents are given the trigger words and told to write down the first word, thought, or picture that comes to mind. Unlike interviews and focus groups, phrase completion and word association can be done online and reach more people. Also, it takes less time to look at the data and figure out how users feel. Once you know the most common ways to do qualitative research, you can plan the research process step by step. How to set up a qualitative study. Planning and strategy are very important if you want to get good results from your study. Here are a few general rules about how to do qualitative study. Find out what your study goals are before you can plan or run qualitative market research. You need to know what you want to learn from it. Specifically, the research goals could be to find out how the product or brand is currently or could be positioned, to find out how people feel about the company or product, 
to find out how people react to advertising campaigns, packaging, or design, to test how easy it is to use the website, and to figure out what the product's strengths and weaknesses are. If the researcher didn't have clear goals, it would be hard to do qualitative research, which uses open-ended questions and in-depth answers that are hard to directly understand and analyze. Choose the way you will study. Figure out the best way to do market research by looking at demographics, where your target group lives, how they live their lives, and the product that is being looked at. Most of the time, market researchers work with professional recruiters who find the volunteers and check them out. A big part of the researcher's job is to come up with a list of topics that small groups can talk about. You need to have moderators, who would spend 90 to 120 minutes with the group asking questions, watching how people respond, and studying behavior. Look into different ways to gather information. Once you've decided on observation, you'll need a moderator to watch how the players act and take notes. Most of the time, you need a video camera or a one-way mirror for this method. You can also combine qualitative and quantitative research to get both answers and observations from customers and numbers to assess. When running focus groups, you can either have one discussion with 8 to 10 people or a number of online meetings that last 3 to 4 days. Respondents will either answer questions from the moderator or comment on movies that have already been made. When you do one-on-one -on -one interviews, you need to talk to the people you're interviewing over the phone or set up a meeting. This way will work if you want people to try the product and tell you what they think about it. Look at the info you've collected. Most of the time, it will take the researchers a few days to a few weeks to gather the information. Then, researchers will look at the data and answer your questions based on what they find. The next step is qualitative coding, which is a way to sort the results into groups to find themes and trends. The experts could also include figures to explain what the data means. Also, the report might have a narrative study of the messages and phrases that were meant to be hidden. The last step is to look over the report that the experts made. It can be written down or recorded on film. The paper, which is based on MECE principles, will help you group the patterns and similarities and sort them by demographics and other customer traits. The document will have specific suggestions, so you can draw your own conclusions and start making changes to how you sell your products. In the next part of this piece, we'll take a look at how well-known brands have used qualitative research methods. Examples of qualitative research. Qualitative market research helps brands improve their image and trustworthiness, divide their customers into groups, find market trends, raise awareness, rebrand their products, and find out what consumers want. Let's find out how McDonald's, Starbucks use data to compete with tough rivals. McDonald's. McDonald's asks customers several important questions about the best-selling goods, the best prices, the most effective ads, and the most visited restaurants when doing market research. By answering these questions, you can figure out if the business was able to get more customers. Also, McDonald's uses customer comments to make its products better. Many customers were especially upset that there weren't any healthy or organic options on the menu. So, the company added apple pieces and other healthy foods to the menu and started a campaign to show that chicken nuggets and burgers were made of real meat. Starbucks Starbucks wants its customers to give feedback on its website and share ideas through Twitter. The company keeps an eye on social media and cultural trends, and customers can try out the goods in the stores. From 2008 to 2018, Starbucks used the My Starbucks Idea platform to get feedback on its goods and keep making them better. The company used more than 275 suggestions from customers, such as ideas for new products and ways to improve business responsibility.